Hey, what's up everyone? Danny here. By the time you watch this video, I will be out of town for the holidays. So I hope you all had a good New Year celebration as we enter into 2017. I asked my friend Lee if he could fill in while I'm gone because he has a YouTube channel called CompTV and he does very similar content to myself. He does PC builds, benchmarking, unboxing PC tech, as well as tips and stuff. So him filling in works perfectly. We had this conversation not too long ago where we were talking about what kind of on-screen display software to use when monitoring our system, uh, whether it be for benchmarking or just when we're testing out games and stuff. And I made a tutorial on how to use MSI Afterburner and Reva Tuner, and that's just what I use mainly. He uses NZXT Cam, and I never really got a chance to thoroughly check it out. So I asked Lee if he could make a video comparing the two, and we could throw it on my channel because I think that'd be helpful. So uh, that's exactly what he did, and I'm going to show you guys the video. So please extend to him the same respect and courtesy that you guys do to me and my videos. And I will see you after the New Year's. Enjoy! Now before I let you get enough time to contemplate why there is a stranger, much less attractive person on Danny's channel, I'm going to get right into the battle. You're probably used to seeing the FPS counters and monitoring information on the screen recordings of the various benchmark videos we all know and love. Well, whether you use one yourself and are thinking of switching or haven't decided which software to pick yet, today we will be pitting MSI Afterburner and NZXT Cam head to head to see which one is the winner for the best on-screen display software. You may be wondering why we didn't consider any other software software that provides similar functionality, but these two are simply the two that Danny and I use on a regular basis. Feel free though to leave any thoughts and suggestions below regarding what software you think might win in a similar battle as this one. These two programs are very popular to PC enthusiasts and average users alike, and although both are known also for their overclocking features, we will mainly be focusing on the on-screen display aspects of both programs. We will, however, briefly consider some additional features. I will admit I'm not a professional user by any means, but I've been using both regularly for a while now, so I'll be offering my impressions as well as comparing some empirical data offered by the internet. And we can always trust the internet, right? That said, in order to make this a fair competition, we will score these two programs on the basis of two different categories, features and support, and user interface and ease of use. This is to make sure that we are able to focus on what tools are available in both situations, but also highlight how quickly and easily the program can be used, especially considering the aesthetics of the interface. Also, we don't have enough time to get into too many specifics of each program, but be sure to check out Danny's tutorial on Afterburner linked somewhere around here. I'll be using the first category to give a brief introduction and background to the program as well, so let's dig right in. MSI Afterburner is definitely the veteran here since it's generally considered the go-to overclocking software by many reputable companies and even our favorite tech tubers. It often comes paired with the Reva Tuner Statistics server, providing enhanced on-screen functionality including customizing the font family, size, color, and position, as well as adding various hardware monitoring such as the utilization of the CPU, graphics card, and RAM along with their temperatures and clock speeds. Thankfully, in regards to the on-screen display portion of the software, where the age of Afterburner has given the developers plenty of time to tweak the program, allowing it to run its overlay on almost any game unless the game is utilizing certain APIs such as Vulkan or have intentionally coded barriers against third-party on-screen displays. A few examples of this include Doom running the Vulkan API and H1Z1. Thankfully, both games offer an in-game alternative. Cam is somewhat of the new kid on the block, having only gained traction recently since their newest version of the software was only released this year. Having to compete with the more widely accepted alternatives, Cam does offer a breath of fresh air with its comparable functionality and modern design. More on that later. Cam, like Afterburner, offers a suite of hardware tweaking such as custom fan curves, overclocking, and of course, an on-screen display. Unfortunately, Cam's FPS overlay settings only allow you to adjust your font from a set of sizes which is a pretty sizable negative. Especially since Afterburner uses a slider that is seemingly never ending. This is unfortunate since in some instances the fonts are annoyingly small. Also it's been noted that Cam can oftentimes be buggy on a given number of games whether it's not turning on or glitching in and out of visibility, but NZXT representatives have publicly announced that they are actively working on those known bugs. Overall though, within my recent testing, I've only found issues with NZXT Cam FPS on games that Reva Tuner also has problems on. It seems that in this category there's somewhat of a walk 
gosh, I don't personally own any games that one overlay works on while another doesn't. And although I couldn't have said the same a few months back, Cam must have released some updates to fix some of their gaming compatibilities because all of my previous issues have been addressed. The main issue that most people face when dealing with Afterburner is that it's really weird to use. When you first start it up, it's pretty tough to find what goes where and what to click, and eventually you're forced to just swallow your pride and look up a tutorial on how to set it up. This may not be the case for everyone, but Danny and I both had a similar situation when dealing with this software. Some positives, however, are that MSI does give you the option to change your skins to personalize the software a bit more and provides decent monitoring graphs and statistics to fill you in on as much hardware detail in a fairly readable fashion. But if we're talking interface, Cam has got you covered. It only took me a few minutes to get used to Cam, and whether or not the struggle through Afterburner made the transition easier is debatable, but either way, the gorgeous UI and simple layouts Cam offers are the perfect example of modern design. You can't reskin the entire UI like you could with Afterburner, but it comes with the trade-off of color schemes, banner images, and a responsive UI. Just in case you don't know what that means, responsive design is when you create a dynamic layout that changes depending on the available width of its container. For instance, as you see here, in its default width, Cam shows various monitoring information about your system, but if you widen the window or go full screen, all of a sudden all of the available stats and graphs are shown on the screen. To be fair, Afterburner does offer a similar range in available monitoring, but again in a less user-friendly format. There isn't too much to say here since from a strictly design and usability standpoint, I think the winner is clear here. But let's go ahead and wrap up everything we found today. For some closing thoughts and honorable mentions, overall, Afterburner paired with Riva Tuna really is the defending champion since it has been out longer and also springs from a company who actually makes physical graphics cards. This is somewhat of an important distinction to make since NZXT is more known for their other products, such as their cases and RGB solutions. To say that more clearly, MSI made Afterburner as a GPU manufacturer, while NZXT made CAM to be a control panel for their other various non-GPU related hardware. However, if I had to pick one software to recommend as an on-screen display, I would suggest Cam. Again, Cam is super easy out of the box and isn't going to take more than a few minutes to set up. The interface is beautiful and the one page setup for the FPS overlay is a breeze. Hopefully this can be a reality check for MSI to not be lazy though as I think a facelift and re-optimization is long overdue. I do think Afterburner does edge out Cam on the side of overclocking due to its more extended voltage controls but in lines with ease of use, I do prefer overclocking without touching voltage. Also, Danny and I agreed that both of these programs need to implement either a drop shadow or background container around the overlays so that they will display more clearly on every color background during gameplay, which does change a lot. But that wraps up the battle. Do you agree with who won? Let us know which one you use or which one you would pick in the comments below. Also give this video a like if you think Danny is one heck of a tech tuber. And don't forget to subscribe to his channel for more of his videos, of which I am a huge fan as well. Danny will be back with you guys next week and I hope to maybe see a few of you on my channel. Oh, and in case you didn't know, I'm Lee from CompTV. TV.